Good, okay. Hi, I'm Dakota Hancock. Um, this is my cipher. I don't know what it's called, but it's a ciphering thing. Um, I did mine on the Fialca 125M, which is... The Fialca is the encoding system, and the 125M is the machine. So, a little history. Well, first of all, here's a picture of the Fialca machine right here on my computer, if you can see that. I'll zoom in. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to look at that a little bit later. The history of that machine, um, it started in the Soviet Union, or the USSR, in the war. So, in the Cold War, to be exact, in the late 1950s, they needed a way to, con to what is it, contact or talk, communicate between both different, um, different countries and how to get through it. It started in Russia, so the alphabet on this is, is Russian, and so it differs between every country, though. Um, like I said, it was in the 1950s. It was used by the Warsaw Pact countries. Um, and it had a set of ten wheels, and that's really cool. Um, that's about all the history you really need on it. And, okay, how it works. This is the fun part. The machine's name is the 125, M125. And later on, they invented a machine called the M125-3. Which is, a uh, it just adds in punctuation and better things and dashes and all cool things about that. And it's really, really cool. But... Um, so if we can go back to this picture real quick, we'll see, okay, so right here in the picture, if you can see it really good, there are ten little circles right there, and so each one of those circles has a set of 30 letters on it, like I said here, it's 30 by 30, matrix of letters, because you have 30 and then 10 wide, so it's going to be around a 30 by 30 matrix system, because every time, here we go, right here, is this, is the system, so... When you, every time you type a letter, let's say this D, for instance, this shifts down or up, depending on which way you have the cipher, the key set, which means the next key would go the opposite direction. So if this is to go up, this would go down, and then this would go up, and this would go down. And that's kind of how they get the different, the different cipher in there of what they type in. So that's the really cool thing. And so here I'm going to show you a little example of what the, let's go back down to this and see a little example of, okay, so right here you can see better the this the wheels, how they look. They are in the Russian language, so sorry, I don't know it that well. I'm not that, you know, that cool. So, they'd have a set, and the whole wheel would have red letters, and then some, or they'd have mostly black letters and then some red letters, but this one is a different one, and it has red letters and then some black letters. The black one is where it was originally set, on the set line. So then you'd know how to set it back to the original once you're done. Back to zero is what it's called. And so that was what they put in. And those were, that's the key of the whole, of the whole cipher is, is how it's set up, how the different um, wheels, the elect electro, I can't remember the name of it, electro coding wheels was, uh, the electrical coding wheels were, were done. So here is going to be something really cool. So for instance, if you wanted, this is how you get to the encrypting process. So I was going to fix it up here, but the encrypting process is pretty cool. I'm going to erase this real quick, and we're going to get this in there. Okay. So the encrypting process, first of all, you have your cipher machine, which has ten wheels, boom, 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 right next to each other. That's pretty cool. I don't know how many that is. But then you have your uh, keyboard down here with your letters. <laughs> so there's a button you push, and it sets all of these to the zero. So it sets it all to the, to the minimum. Um, the black letters, and then there's another button that you push, and it's it says um, print, or it has the option for print and and um, punch to punch holes in it. So you have that, and the one that everyone wanted is this one because if you're encrypting it or you're writing the letter, it's going to be the print and punch. So you can have it what looks like this right here. If you can see this. Right here is the print, and then right here they punch the code in also, in different sizes and different codes, and that's, that makes it really easy to, to decrypt or to decipher. So, what happens is you have this letter, and you set it to 5 spacing, so you can see the different spacing goes in sets of 5, and what happens is, so you type in your, your cool thing, and pops out on the side right here, this right here. And so that is your encrypted piece of 
literature or text that you want, the message. Now, I don't know how to say what I could type in and get because I don't speak Russian, but let's just say it comes out in a set of letters and numbers. So you get a set that's more like 1, 2, A, Z, C, 4, 7, F, something like that. And that would be your code. And that would be incredibly hard to, uh, to decipher if you didn't have the key. Now, during the war, they, the Warsaw Pact, all the countries in the Warsaw Pact, they shared the key, which was right here. The same key for every country. When they're not in war, they, did, they didn't share this at all. They, they had separate ones for every country and the separate languages. It's language, language specific. So they had to uh, create their own key. So then they couldn't communicate with each other over the Fialka when they weren't in war. But when they're in war, it's their way of communicating together. But the deciphering has the same print and print and punch. But you see the problem when you decipher it. You don't want to have the punched holes anymore because right here you can't see any of the letters because it punches out the first four of that, the first four letters in that, in that code. So what you're going to do is you're going to set this whole thing to zero up here to zero, which means all oh, this is on a straight line again on the cipher. And there's Instead of encrypt that button, you switch that button over to a part that's de decipher or yeah or decrypt something like that. So now when you set it over to the decipher and you have the key correct, now what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to put your paper in the paper that you need to be printed out, which would be going down now to this other paper. Let's go over. And this is the decrypted one. Okay. It says, the Fialka is an impressive machine. So what happens is you would type in that 137A6Q, whatever you had. You would type that in to this now on the decipher. And it would be zero. So then what would come out of here is your decrypted message and you would have your decrypted message and be able to speak to, to each other through that. This is an incredible machine. I wish I owned one because I would use it probably every day because it's legit. Um, you can do it that way or you can put it in with the punch tools and slide it into a reader and it reads it and just shoots out the message that way. That's why it would be easier to have the punch tools. Um, this is my, my project on the Fialka 125 cipher, um, Dakota Hancock. I hope I did it right. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you.